Making me think also, John, about the notion of fractured community, you know, and, and thinking about working with groups, working with large groups, mm -hmm. you know, working with communities. And some of the historic large groups Rogers and his colleagues were involved in had enormous numbers, mm -hmm. you know, enormous numbers mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. for seven days. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with many nationalities, nationalities complex yeah. old histories and um, yeah. stereotypes and so on. Um, uh, so, uh, that, that he experimented, um, mm. I think in the best sense, but trying to explore the possibilities of communication on such a grand scale. Mm. Similarly, at a, at a similar time to the group analytic movement, again mm -hmm. looking at social processes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but it seems to me what courage that must have required. Mm. And what courage it continues to require, mm. but if you know if one could go into a fractured community or one's invited in or a, a, a group or invited in that the capacity to listen to and to be open to the multiple conflicting voices mm -hmm. in that community um, is an enormous human capacity, it seems to mm. me. And when it can be modelled and invited without defensiveness, mm -hmm. that's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. um, and I realise sometimes if I'm fractured myself, or if I am biased um, perhaps with one set of beliefs and not another set of beliefs, um, how hard it would be then for me to go in mm -hmm. in a much more open way yes. to be open to the others without feeling I've got to defend my position or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, it, um, the working in fractured communities, I think, is very interesting. But I think that's where teams of facilitators or whatever really require, need each mm -hmm. other to mm -hmm. be able to stay open to mm -hmm. all the parts and all the elements and to be sensitive, mm -hmm. to, you know, because it, I do believe it is in the, uh, the full explanation and exploration of mm -hmm. all of those, mm. that something else emerges. Emerges, but yeah. That is a process that takes time and it takes courage. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it's not to be underestimated in terms of its its capacity. You know, and because Rogers was nominated for the mm. Nobel Peace Prize in eighty seven mm. for that work, mm. which is very work, yeah, which is yeah. extraordinary. Mm. Um, but there is something, isn't there? I was just thinking about if I am fractured or if I am feeling. Yeah. particularly preoccupied in defending a position that's not mm -hmm. the position best position to go in to be facilitating so mm -hmm. the whole notion of of being involved with or facilitating or the capacity to listen to all points of view mm -hmm. uh, is immensely demanding and mm. maybe to hold your own position but to hold it lightly yes, yes. yes. and yeah. I, I remember i remember rogers once saying um Somebody challenged him in a large group conference and said, oh, come on, Carl, surely by now, you know, you, um, you go into these things, but, you know, should you go to that country, they're just tyrants or they're dictators or they're mm -hmm. you know, oppressors or whatever, um, you know. And, 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 and Roger said, um, I think what I've come to learn and my discipline is about facilitating communication. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what I'm concerned to do is to do the best I can is to enable people to talk to one another. Mm -hmm. So he didn't rise to the the whole thing of what political position you're in and therefore you judge the others negatively because mm -hmm. they, they don't mm -hmm. value democracy or they don't mm -hmm. value this. You know. mm -hmm. and, and it felt to me that was a very sound, mm -hmm. sane response. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't taking political views. He was concerned to how could he facilitate the communication across difference. Yeah, yeah. Poof, yeah. powerful.